Okay, on this episode, we're gonna put this bunk back on Project Snowman. So we'll have to get the peat out of the way here and spark up Snowman and, and move it over. And I'll do the same trick as last time where I used the chain falls to lift the, the, the sleeper up off the rafters there and then I can back the truck underneath and, and hopefully it goes on there without too much issue. And I've also got some gravel coming in today to bring the elevation up. Hey, morning Biff. And as you can see, there's still probably six inches of elevation to come up. So that's not quite enough gravel. So I've got six more loads coming in and we'll get that all spread. Oh, my neighbor in his GT40 money bags. And we'll get that gravel all spread. And that way we can start putting the trucks away in the shop where they belong. All right. Let's talk more work. Slap some bacon on a biscuit and let's go. We're burning daylight. That's a good feeling. Okay, so she's ready to roll. So now what we need to do, I got a few more things to get out of the way is we've got to rig this up and raise it up into the rafters. <laughs> Sweet. And just like the peat, when you do a project like this, actually the first time this gravel's seen the light of day in almost a year. 
Got a few parts to pick up. Bunch of junk, old bolts and caps from U-joints. Oh, that feels good though. That sounds like the first load of gravels here. Mint. Yeah, I know these guys know how to slam a tailgate. Come on now. Oh, there it is. So the first challenge of the day is this plate. So this was mounted to the back uh, passenger corner of the bunk. And when I tried to lift the bunk, I couldn't get it off. So I actually had to unbolt this bracket. The other, the other corners there are, are, these brackets are all still there and the bolt's still there. Someone in their infinite wisdom actually, I don't know if this was turning and it pissed them off, so they just decided to throw a weld on there. So this was actually welded to the plate. So I had to lower the plate down. And now that I finally got it off, the uh, the, the bushing, it's all rusted and, uh, and corroded. I had to cut it off, it was just brutal. So now I'm gonna have to zip cut it off here, clean this all up, cut the weld off, and then we'll have to get a new bolt, so. Nothing that can't be done, it's just a little bit of work, that's all. Okay, so next, just putting in some new bushings into the mounts. These are the old ones that came out of there. Obviously they needed replacing. And I was quite surprised. They went to Kenworth and these things were only, they were only 20 bucks each. I say only, but that's probably the cheapest part I've ever bought from Kenworth. And they are a pretty tight fit, so. Oh, a little lube helps though. There we go. Okay. One more to go. <laughs> so I discovered why this bolt was welded in there because i looked underneath the sleeper so there it goes and there's no uh opening or access hole to get a wrench on the flats here so as you go to tighten this nut up and the sleeper when the bunk finally goes on there this thing would just keep turning and you'd have no way to hold it in place so i still don't have my wire my welder wired up i will be putting a a fancy plug on the wall and a nice 50 amp uh, breaker on there so I can actually get my welder going so this was kind of embarrassing that I couldn't just put a couple little ugly beads on the side of this to hold it in place so I had to use JB weld but where there's a will there's a way so now we can get this mounted on the sleeper and then when we set it down into place I can put the washer on and then just zip the nut up and it won't fall off the truck all right so as I was looking at the bunk I had a realization what alcoholics refer to as a moment of clarity I realized that I don't want to put the bunk on just yet. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because when I did the Peterbilt, I put the, the sleeper on the truck and then I had to go in and out of the truck, you know, past the, through the cab, through the opening and into the sleeper. And it was just, it was a lot of work and a lot more trouble than it was worth. And if you think about it, that actually had the bigger walkthrough opening as opposed to this smaller crawl through opening. So. I realized once this is on the truck, it's just gonna be a nightmare to try and put the interior in. So I thought, okay, while it's sitting here on the floor, this would be a perfect opportunity to start putting those interior panels in that the day cap company sent uh, a while back. So let's, uh, let's get at her. Yeah, that's gonna look good. Okay, let's get the, the drill bits and the fasteners and all that fun stuff and see if we can't put an interior in this. So the first challenge that I see is this, this kind of divider. Now it's gonna have to, the panel's gonna have to sneak past this. So I was just trying to bend it back slightly. I mean, ideally it would be nice to take this divider out of here but it's actually riveted on so and again I don't have my hook guns yet so we'll just make this work and try and get an opening big enough for that and I should be able to 
slide the panel through. And then the other thing I realized was, you know, it's got holes marked out or pre-drilled, so that'll be easy. But along the top there, well, I guess it should be able to screw right into there and then into the bottom. But what I wanted to do was mark out, just in case I need to put any down the rails, is mark out where these guys are. So we'll do that all the way along. Like I say, just in case, because once this panel's in place, it's gonna hide all those, those support rails. I got it lined up pretty nice. I'm happy with the way that looks. Nice and even, so now we just need to screw it in. I mean, these, these uh, interiors definitely aren't that hard to install. They just take a little bit of time. And so with these insta with the kit, you get these little uh, black screws with the, the washers on it. So that's kind of in the hidden spots that you can't see. And then similar to the, the Peterbilt is you get these, these screws with the little buttons that just snap on top. So I was trying to think, should I use the black screws or these guys? But I'm thinking that'll look nice up where you can see it. And then maybe we'll use black screws here because the headliner is going to come over top and go on that lip and then we'll use then we'll use the fancy buttons to match so okay something like that i like to drill a, a pilot These are self tappers, but I still find it works better if you drill a pilot hole. There it goes. And you simply put the little button on there. How nice does that look? Okay, so we'll just repeat that all the way down and try and keep this thing straight. this soft aluminum you actually don't need to drill a pilot hole with these self tappers as long as you're not trying to drill onto a or screw it onto a rivet huh. okay one two five and more down here down below. Now I don't think that's aluminum so I'm gonna have to pre-drill that. I guess we can try.
question is, do we want to put any screws on the cleats? And I don't think so. I think screws at the top and screws at the bottom should be fine. I don't want to wreck the look of that. Okay, and that's it. One panel done. I can get out of here. Uh, So this little ridge here is actually preventing the panel from coming down to the same, to the height that it should be. You can see it's still raised a bit. So what I'm going to do is, same thing I did to the other side, I'm just going to mark it and notch it. Just notch it out and then it'll allow it to set right down in there. So a little bit of, a little bit of fit up we need to do here, no big deal. Notch that piece up. So just use the cutters, bend the little tab up. We'll leave it attached in case it's a taller than me. Set it like that. Slick. That's looking really sharp and that's a nice start okay so it's getting pretty late in the day so i think what we're going to do is wrap it up there and in the next episode we'll finish up we got still got to do the panels on the door we got to put in the headliner and then we got to figure out a way to get it on the truck okay so this is a special on the hunt clip where we're actually going to head down i got my daughter kaylee with me hi and we're gonna go meet a big fan of the Twin Stick channel. He said he called me up and he's got some uh, very strategic parts that we need for the truck. So we're gonna go meet him and pick those up. And then we got another special surprise. We, uh, we might catch up with another famous YouTuber from the Peace Country this afternoon at a car show. So it should be fun. I'm here at, the, at Don's place and look what he's got. He, he said he had some Jake, some Jake heads that he wanted to uh, donate to, to uh, the Iron Duke. And guess what? It comes with an engine. <laughs> so let's see if we can get it on here, Don. Now, I don't know if this uh, this cat skid loader will lift this old girl, but we're going to find out. Oh, and look what else he's donating. <laughs> uh, it never hurts to have a spare block. It hasn't been running in a while, but, you know, spare parts for the Duke and for, uh, for LBL. get the old tractor out here. I wonder what the missus is going to think of me bringing home an old engine. Twin stick junkyard. <laughs> yeah, it's pushing the limits of the loader for sure. Oh, there it goes. Trailer could take this weight. <laughs> there we go. I guess I better get that block. <laughs> well, we got her on there. I promise I'll go easy. <laughs> oh, I'm not worried about this whole trailer. <laughs> I see what you're doing right under the mount there. Ah, what an awesome donation. You're the man, Don. <laughs> uh. 
<laughs> good old 10 r 22s see if we can get them in the bucket here and throw them on the trailer so these are the original famous widow makers why do you want to get rid of them they're so classic <laughs> oh yeah you can feel that little edge yeah. there yeah yeah they're so they come apart in the middle yeah 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 those belong in a museum they belong in <laughs> yeah, cut up. So it's a story on the old Merc? Uh, it's just a, a truck from my buddy's uh, dad's estate. Oh, no kidding. It's, um, That's cool. It needed a home. Yeah, so needs some work. <laughs> yeah, right it's on. It's a runner. No kidding. Yep. Box obviously still works. You raised it up. Oh, I raised it up. Oh, did you? <laughs> oh, it needs a little work. Oh, right on. Cool. Oh yeah? Because um, I have a bunch of these old trucks kicking around. Like the windshield. And, uh, so we were watching Fargo. a bunch of rat rod and shit. Okay. And, and one day he says, he says, Dad, why don't we just build one of those out of your old trucks? And I was like, <laughs> well why don't we? <laughs> that's awesome. I like it. So, Even putting a little bunk on it. Yeah, that's, that's a, that's a Can-Am off an old map. Is it now? Yeah, yeah. It was damaged. I bought it damaged. Sure. Just reskin it. You gotta get a huck gun and huck her all together. To oh, I know those. Peterbilt heat shields? Yep. Yep. Oh, you're gonna use those for the stacks? Well, maybe. That would be awesome. Maybe. What motor's it got in it? It's got a 360 in it. Oh, nice. But I'm, I'm, uh, I'm thinking 12,000. A 12V Cummins would be just sweet in this thing. I've got a, I, I'm watching on Kijiji for 12 valves and they hold their value, those stupid things. They do. Guys really want them now for all these extra projects. So what do we got here, an old Pete? Yeah, that's, that's my. I like this one. It's a 77. A friend of mine just bought an old Pete down in California. I think he's actually picking it up this weekend. Oh, okay. He's having it all redone. Oh, the stacks look wicked cool. Yeah, I, I like the drop bumper. Go ahead. I remember this truck from my childhood. Really? Yeah. Cummins well, 350. I'm... Yeah, it's old school to know the paddles. Yeah, yeah. So I, I've started, <laughs> I've started um, redoing it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to get all that old insulation and stuff out. Might reupholster it, I'm not sure. Well, I know a good company that does upholstery panels. Sure do. <laughs> so you still use this? Uh, I haven't for a long time. Ah. Uh, I think the last thing I did was pull my holiday trailer with it. Oh, it's got bags. Cool. Yeah. yeah it's there. I, I did. I hauled asphalt with it for a while. <laughs> and dump hook to it. Oh, it's a great cab over. It, it's it's in good shape. Nice. Still got the original Cummins in it. Yeah, the original 350s in there. Oh yeah, that looks familiar. <laughs> cool, very cool. You got lots of sleepers too. <laughs> I know where to come for a bunk. What are you starting a collection here? <laughs> it's um, yeah, sorta. <laughs> Ish. They're all looking pretty good shape. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty good. What's the story on this one? That's a long story. Oh yeah? <laughs> you still use it or it's been parked here for a while? It's been parked. Oh, the old Crooked ever, Kenworth. Ever since it got here. <laughs> what year? 80, 80. Boy, she's a beefy old girl, huh? Frack Master I, That's right, I did. I, I should have known that, but it was so faded. But yeah, the yellow Frack Master colors. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that's neat. And then what about this one here? Ah, that's a 69. 69, really? Yep. She's an oldie. Yep. I like your spare tire mount. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, there we go. Oh, it's even got sticks. <laughs> when, when lumber prices come down, I'm gonna do the floorboards. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I think steel or stainless steel would probably be cheaper it than lumber, lumber right now. Down. Oh yeah, let's check that out, the old shift pattern. Yeah. It's, it's a four and four. It's got a five in it. Oh, it's got a five in it now. That was the original. Yeah. Yeah. 
Wow. I know someone who wants that auxiliary if you ever want to get rid of it. <laughs> oh, you got the jewelry. This is like Peg's truck. Yeah, yeah, similar, yeah. Yeah, very similar. When was the last time this thing was running around? Uh, a couple days ago. Oh, really? You're still running around? That's cool. Uh, I'm not seriously running it. It's yeah, yeah, but it still toy. runs and drives. I, I, I know all about having toy trucks. <laughs> Yeah, the old Kenworth emblems on there. Yeah. You're missing a connection on your exhaust there. There is. It's a little <laughs> loud right now. I'll bet. What's in it? <laughs> a 671. Oh, really? Yeah. I imagine she just roars. It barks. Does it start? Yeah. Can I hear it? Yeah. Fire it up, fire Let's it up. turn some diesel into smoke. Uh, found someone else that loves trucks as much as I do. That's great. Oh, yeah! <laughs> that sounds mint! That's how a diesel should sound, not like these new Ford trucks. You can't even hear them. What a class act. What a lovely donation to the to the cause. Thanks again, Donnie. If you're ever around Edmonton, you and your son can stop on by Twin Stick Garage anytime. I'm just here at Butter's truck wash. Peg and Dallas invited me out. I guess we're supposed to be a burnout competition here. Yeah, there's a lot of people. You know, I'm gonna find them. Oh, that old Kenworth looks familiar. They must be around here somewhere. Oh, he doesn't have the slicks on there, though. This thing ain't ready to do a burnout. All right, let's go find Peg. Peg showing me his uh, his new honey that he brought to the. Uh... <laughs> oh, look at that! Yeah, isn't that fucking sweet? <laughs> what are you gonna haul with this? <laughs> oh, that's funny, Peg. So it does good wheelies, you say? Beauty. <laughs> uh, good folks. We even snuck a little sticker on the back of the truck for good measure. 